Zionism, as an ideology and political movement, emerged in the late 1800s to support the creation of a homeland for Jews in Palestine. Zionists see these demands as justified based on their ancestors who lived here 3,000 years ago. They want to continue the Jewish kingdoms established in Palestine. In various periods of history, Zionism, on the one hand, on the other hand, political Zionism to find a solution to the anti-Semitic events in Europe, especially with more secular discourses. Under the influence of the Enlightenment in Europe, following the French Revolution in 1789, Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries, the Jewish community began to form under the influence of rationalism, romanticism, and most importantly, nationalism in Europe. If I briefly explain Haskalah, which is the Jewish Enlightenment, it is a movement that emerged among European Jews in the 18th century. The movement, which emphasizes the application of Enlightenment values, persistently advocates the European integration of Jews. Thus, the movement forms the basis of the Jewish political movement, this group, which was a secular community, moved away from religion and tradition and began to define themselves as a nation rather than a religious community inspired by the Essen nationalism movement in Europe at that time especially the unification of Germany with the efforts of Arto Bismarck in 1870 the event that really ignited political Zionism was in 1894 the Dreyfus incident that took place in France is as follows the Dias incident is as follows. The incident that took place in 1894 were a political scandal that divided France into two. Alfred Dreyfus, a Jew who was a captain in the French army, was accused of giving military intelligence information to the German embassy in Paris and was convicted of treason. However, this sentence is sufficient evidence, although it was not given. Emile Zola announced this incident to the public by writing his famous letter to the president of the time, Felfaria, called Jacus, that is, I accuse. The Dreyfus incident is one of the most important examples of anti-Semitism that rose in Europe in the 19th century. This incident was an unexpected development for the Jews, because compared to Eastern Europe and Russia, France was the country of enlightenment and freedom. Austrian journalist Theodor H.S., who witnessed this event, published his book titled The Jewish State of the Year in 1896 and convened the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland in 1897. At this first Congress, the World Zionist Organization was established and Theodor Herz was elected as the first president of the organization at the Congress. Decisions were taken to facilitate the settlement of Jews in Palestine, to strengthen the Jewish national identity, and to make efforts to obtain the necessary consent from various states for these purposes. The World Zionist Congress, which started to meet annually after the first Congress, has convened every two years since 1902. The Congress has been held every four years from World War I to the present day. The first strategy of the World Zionist Organization was to get permission from the Ottoman Sultan Abdulhamid for the Jews to settle in Palestine. For this purpose, Theodor H.S. came to Istanbul and made various offers to Sultan Abdulhamid. In one of these offers, Herz told Sultan Abdulhamid that the Jews who held the European stock market were in the Ottoman Empire. He offered them Palestinian lands in return for payment of all their debts. However, this offer was rejected by the Sultan. When these efforts were inconclusive, it was planned to gradually migrate to Palestine in small groups. In order to finance these migrations, the Jewish National Fund was established in 1901 and the British Bank of Palestine was established. In 1903, Zionist leaders, for example, in his book titled The Jewish State, has also suggested Argentina, which he described as the most fertile land in the world, as a homeland for the Jews. In 1903, K. 
Kenya was suggested to the Jews by the British cabinet in 1903. Hers was the first to suggest countries other than Palestine as a homeland for the Jews, while I opposed this proposal. It was later discussed at the Sixth Zionist Congress. It could only be a temporary solution for the situation of the Jews who were going through difficult times. However, this proposal did not find much support at the Congress. Especially the Russian Jewish delegation was strongly opposed to this plan. If I were to briefly explain the pogrom, it means literally nothing. Pogrom means the destruction of a group along with the environment in which they live. Attacks targeting Jews are called pogroms. The first pogrom against Jews took place in 1821 in Odessa, which is now in Ukraine. After that, it was carried out in Russia between 1881 and 1884 by Russian Tsar Alexander. Large-scale pogroms were carried out against the Jews accused of the assassination of S. Even bloodier pogroms continued in Russia between 1903 and 1906, despite the failure of the proposals. A group led by Israeli Zenvi continued their efforts to establish a Jewish country. Wherever in the world, on the other hand, a very small minority, although it supported the establishment of a Jewish autonomous republic in the far eastern lands of Russia, within the Soviet Union, the Palestinian territories have become the most suitable option for the Jews since then. The most important point to be noted here is that the aim of Zionism is not only to find a shelter for the Jews oppressed in various parts of the world under anti-Semitism, but also to help them find shelter. One of the most important pillars of this strategy is to create a state where they can govern themselves, cultivate their own lands, practice their own arts, and of course defend themselves. One of the most important pillars of this strategy is to revive the ancient Jewish culture, to spread it by teaching Hebrew as the language of this state, and to spread it by teaching Hebrew as the language of this state. Eliza ben Yehuda, one of the fathers of this idea, was previously called Yiddish by European Jews. They were using a language close to medieval German in 1880. He and his friends revised Hebrew, which had not been used for 2,000 years, and turned it into a common language. Tel Aviv was built as the city where Hebrew was first spoken, and Hebrew began to be widely used among the Jews in Palestine from the 1920s. Zionism revealed its goals. It was not a movement, supported by all Jews, especially the radical Jews, who believed that the return to Palestine would only occur after the coming of the Messiah and that the Jews should continue to suffer in order to facilitate the coming of the Messiah. For this reason, they opposed the establishment of a Jewish state politically, while Zionism was trying to find a solution to the existing Jewish problem. It was receiving the necessary support from the great states of the period. One of the most important supporters of the Zionist movement in this period was England. England was very important for the Jews, both as an imperialist power and as a country where the Jews could live in security. The Jews controlled politics in this country. For example, in the 1870s, statesman Benjamin de Sill rose to the position of Prime Minister. Disraeli served in 1868 and between 1874 and 1880. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Goodbye, stay tuned for